All right. <laughs> All right, our first award of the night is the Outstanding Chapter Leader Award. This award is going to a leader of a small chapter who always puts on great events and stayed active online during COVID. This leader always meets deadlines, which is my favorite kind of person, <laughs> uh, and strives to improve her chapter. And she's also known as a pleasure to work with by all members and colleagues. The Fulbright community would not be the same without her. I'm so happy to present this award to our, our outstanding chapter leader, Kathleen Mulligan from the Central New York chapter. Thank you so much. I'm, ooh, ooh, whoa. <laughs> that says something about Christine. She always lands on her feet. <laughs> I am incredibly honored um, by this. And uh, just, I want to say that, um, I sought out my and joined my local chapter when I returned from my Fulbright in India because I wanted to offer the same hospitality that my husband and I were offered in India and then in Pakistan. And that is a hard thing to match. Um, I also feel an obligation to give back to a program that changed my life. The quote from Rita Dove in the film yesterday resonated with me. She said, that's when this larger life began, and that is true for me. We have a small, mighty chapter that covers a vast geographical area, made even more vast during the long upstate New York winters. <laughs> but we, our board is a group of individuals passionately committed to the Fulbright mission, and I am grateful to all of them, especially my husband, David, because when your wife is the chapter president and says, honey, we need a new communications director, all he can really say is okay. <laughs> so thank you very much and thank you, Christine, so much. All right, everyone, I promise not to fall off the stage again, but I guess we'll see. It's been a it's been a long day, yeah, watch yourself. All right, okay, where's the clicker? Okay, our next award is the Outstanding Former Chapter President Award. Throughout the Fulbright Association's history, we have had the pleasure of working with some incredible chapter presidents. Many of you are here, actually, so thank you. These people are passionate, hardworking, and inspiring. The winner of this award has been a chapter president of not one chapter, but two chapters in her time with the Fulbright Association. She is passionate about Fulbright and is sure to spread the message to everyone she meets. I am so happy to present this award to longtime Fulbright Association member, Charlotte McDaniel. So Christine told me that I could make some comments, so I came prepared to do that. <laughs> I promise not to take a long time. <laughs> She's been wonderful. <clears throat> so before I begin, I also want to own up to a, a thing a professor of ethics should do, and that is a little transparency. I have a Zoom here. My family is Zooming in, and I am thrilled. I know, and I'm, yeah, <laughs> and it, 
It includes my six and nine-year-old granddaughters, and I am so excited, and I know they're watching. So if I tear up, you'll know why. <laughs> so thank you so very much for this recognition. I'm not only humbled, but I'm really honored by your support and your affirmation. Yeah, some of the activities were hard work at times, but they never really felt that way. It was just fun and for such a wonderful cause. I loved every minute of it. It has been a delight and a pleasure to serve as a Fulbright. It's a group I really love. My colleagues, the program, its mission, and I also want to be sure and thank the Fulbright staff tonight, especially Christine, for all your support and getting me onto Zoom. Um, it's been a real treat. I also want to express my appreciation to the Central Virginia Board. They're wonderful. And I can tell you for sure, it takes a village, a village board, to make a chapter start and keep running. And they've done a wonderful job. Yeah, they really have. <laughs> And I also want to thank my family that's Zooming in because they have tolerated some evenings away and, and dinners taken out and uh, jaunts out of the country on occasion. Fortunately, my two sons were either in college or traveling and on their own, so that was helpful. But when I was first appointed as a Fulbright, I dove into the web and I read up on Senator Fulbright. His thinking about the program, World War II, why in the world he started the program, how he got that financial support, which was really intriguing. I loved the emphasis on peace and collaboration, averting war, education and cultural exchange. More recently, as I observe, as I'm sure many of you do as well, what's going on, Ukraine, Iran, human rights assaults and those on democracy. I think we have never had a time when Fulbright was more needed and appreciated. It's continu <laughs> its continuing aims also mesh well and help me to continue my own work of four decades in ethics, creating ethical environments. Would that we had more. <laughs> Someone said, why can you retire? There's so much work to do. When the war in Iraq was active, I remember reading a report in the New York Times the notable, the few notable successes occurred when a person or a small group who knew the culture, the language, the religion, the particularities of the people worked with those people. Those were the successes. My colleagues, that's what we as Fulbrights do, and we do it really well. As one of my ambassador friends said to me, you know, Fulbright, is the soft side, it's the informal side of what we do on the more formal side, and what a fabulous compliment it is to our ongoing diplomatic work. Having worked in a country as a Fulbright, coming out of a very impress oppressive dictatorship, I can tell you firsthand, you do not have human rights, ethics, diversity, transparency, much less inclusion in an oppressive country. Doesn't matter whatever level it is or the form. Those are simply contradictory. So if we want to have cultural exchange and lasting peace in the ambience of ethics and human rights, the Fulbright program offers the means, the structure, to help facilitate that end. For those reasons, I want to cheer us all on to continue doing what we as Fulbrights do so well, to support the program and the outstanding values of democracy that it represents. That's the fundamental reason that I am so really proud to be a Fulbright. I knew I wouldn't make it. <laughs> and to accept this award tonight. I sincerely hope that we can all continue to support and affirm our work so that we can be Fulbrights for a long time to come. Thank you so very much.
All right, thank you so much, Charlotte. I'm so happy your family was able to zoom in. Hi, Charlotte's family. Hello. All right, our next award is the Dedication to Diversity and Inclusion Award. Respect for all peoples and cultures and commitment to understanding are core values for everyone in this room and for the Fulbright Association at large. The chapter receiving this award has made a strong commitment to educating its members on diversity, equity, and inclusion practices through the Conversation Roadblocks Framework. Speci specifically, board member Etta Ward has worked diligently to roll out the program to the entire chapter. I am very happy to present this award to the Indiana chapter. Now, unfortunately, the Indiana chapter representatives could not be here today, but they did record a video accepting this, accepting this award. So please just hold for a second, and we'll have Leslie Bozeman and Ed Award to accept the, this award. <laughs> Perhaps, maybe. In the meantime, I hope you're all enjoying your cupcakes. <laughs> I don't know about you, but our table just had one little red velvet cupcake in the center, and I think we're all fighting over it. So, mm -hmm. I did lose, actually, yes. So I'm working very hard. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Leslie Bozeman, president of the Indiana chapter. And I'm at award. I am the vice president of the Indiana chapter. On behalf of our chapter, we're honored to receive the Dedication to Diversity and Inclusion Award. Over the past two years, the Indiana chapter has intentionally included a commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion as a part of our strategic doing objectives, objectives that focus on member engagement and outreach efforts. All of our board members have expressed the importance of helping a diverse audience know that Fulbright is an opportunity for them. However, Etta is distinguished in her efforts to champion the infusion of DEI as an essential aspect of board development and a framework for all of our programming. As the driving force behind this work, we are grateful to Etta for her leadership and her guidance. Thank you, Leslie. Understanding that the DEI journey is never ending, our chapter has set its sights on normalizing conversations around diversity, equity, inclusion, access, belonging, and justice. And everything we do should be viewed through these lenses. This way, no matter what we do, it won't be seen as performative or as an afterthought. It's our goal to do this work in the most genuine and authentic way. The board has engaged in a facilitated discussion about our own roadblocks as it relates to conversations around race and gender. Working from the conversation roadblocks infographic produced by Catalyst. These conversations have resulted in efforts to recruit a more diverse board and have helped shape our planning for outward facing opportunities like the Fulbright in the classroom opportunity we are currently pursuing with upper, upper bound students and a partnership with Martin University, the only predominantly black institution we have in Indianapolis. The board has set the tone for inclusion by partnering with a diverse set of external groups, including those outside of the higher ed context. Thank you very much to the Fulbright Association for recognizing the work of the Indiana chapter. We're committed to the mission of the association and to integrating DEI throughout all of our programming. Thank you again and good night. Thank you. Um, do we have any Indiana chapter members here? Would you like to stand up? Oh, students, stand up. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so glad you're here.
Let's see, I don't know if we're, are we back to our PowerPoint? There we go. All right, our next award is the Program of the Year Award. This year's Program of the Year Award is being given to a chapter who did an excellent job implementing the Fulbright in the Classroom program in its community. Fulbright in the Classroom provides an opportunity for Fulbrighters to share their experiences in K through college classrooms. The goal is exposing students to new cultures and inspiring, inspiring future applicants. We thank this chapter for doing the work and spreading the important Fulbright message. The Program of the Year Award goes to the Chicago chapter. Please welcome President Adele Jose to accept this award. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much to the association. I'm so glad they chose this photo because it represents how much love the Chicago chapter has for its members and its alumni. And the alumni have showed it throughout our years with Fulbright in the Classroom. Uh, it's been an ongoing program and we've always promoted it so much uh, in our chapter. Virtually, it was even more of a challenge, we thought, but our reach extended so much further during the pandemic. We were able to connect to of several schools and several classrooms and the teachers kept wanting us to go throughout the year back and forth and the students they're so adorable they sent so many photos and uh, they had the little t-shirts of Fulbright on and all the little memorabilia that the alumni brought for them and they called it their traveling virtual for the Fulbright so they made their own little names <laughs> for the program uh, but the Chicago chapter has always uh, has always, always cherished the Fulbright in the Classroom program. Many of our board members had helped to bring the program about as well. So of course we continue on the tradition and we will continue to further bring about young Fulbrights to become future scholars such as ourselves and to further the alumni reach throughout the world. Um, there's, uh, sorry, I have so many things I wanna say because they were very adorable. And uh, there's, if you go to our websites and such, they have testimonials from the very small kindergarten to the college students. And it's just a pleasure and a joy because you see the bright-eyed kids ready to become like us, future leaders, future Fulbrights. So I just want to thank the association. Uh, they've helped us so much throughout the years to connect with our alumni and with our students. Thank you very much for this award from the association, from all the board members, and especially our vice president. She couldn't be here tonight, but Tuta Pedja uh, worked a lot on this program along with us as well. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, our next award is the Virtual Program of the Year Award, which is very relevant considering the past couple years. All of our chapters have had to work really hard to uh, better their virtual programming. Uh, but this year, the Fulbright Association partnered with the Foreign Policy Association to roll out their Great Decisions Program among our chapters. The Great Decisions Program is a discussion group model for critical global issues facing the United States. The chapter receiving the Virtual Programming Award did an incredible job implementing this program among their members, giving people an opportunity to participate in important discussions virtually. This award goes to the Walden chapter and their Great Decisions Program. Now, the Walden chapter representatives couldn't be here tonight either. They also recorded a message, but many of you might not know what this chapter is. This is one of our only virtual chapters. So some people in the Fulbright community don't have a chapter in their area, and they're invited to join the Walden chapter. So they've become somewhat of an expert in virtual programming. And here they are to accept the award. Greetings, Fulbrighters. What a fantastic surprise. We're
hopefully we can get their, their speech up here. <laughs> cupcakes, yes, everyone please turn to your cup cupcakes. Greetings, Fulbrighters. What a fantastic surprise. We're overwhelmed and honored with uh, this award that we received from the Virtual Program of the Year Award at this 45th annual conference. Our sincere thanks go to Dr. John Bader, Executive Director Christine Oswald, Assistant Director, and their team for their extraordinary leadership of the Fulbright Association. Our appreciation for this award absolutely extends to the outstanding chapter members who participated in our Great Decisions programming. The combined efforts helped to promote influential discussion groups in the community by encouraging debate and thought-provoking ideas surrounding today's most critical world affairs. And this award will serve as an empowering daily reminder for us to enthusiastically continue seeking opportunities to raise cultural exchange awareness while adding value to others in ways that may advance further positive social change for the greater global good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, our next award is the Excellence in Advocacy Award. The Excellence in Advocacy Award goes to a chapter who has made a commitment to advocating for the Fulbright Program, a very important element of the Fulbright Association. This chapter has gone above and beyond in meeting with congressional members to ensure the future of the program for many years to come. We thank you for your hard work and your commitment to Fulbright advocacy efforts. This award goes to the main chapter. Please welcome past president Elaine Potiker to the stage. Well, it is a great honor to accept this award, this award in behalf of the Maine chapter. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been to Maine. May I have uh, by a show of hands? All right, a lot of you, great. Well, you're probably wondering, how is it that a Maine chapter, being where we are, on the northeast co corner of the United States, in the cold nine months of the year, can be an advocate and a voice for everything because we're so cold all that time. Well, I'm going to tell you why. Um, there's three reasons. One, we made advocacy part of our mission. We're very mission-driven as a, as a chapter, and we decided that it would be incorporated into our strategic plan, and we executed it through an advocacy committee, uh, and those people are wonderful. They have passion. They have stories. And the third reason is our stories are ones that really exemplify what a Fulbright Award is all about. It, because it's not just about what the Fulbright did for you. When we tell our story to our senators and congressmen, and let me tell you who they are, because you've heard their names. Um, one is Senator Susan Collins, um, and, and of course, Senator Angus King, and Shelley Pingree, our congresswoman, and also Jared Golden. And you'll notice that I mentioned two Republicans and two, um, no, I'm sorry, one Republican, one Independent, and two Democrats. So there's no partisanship in their support for us. They believe in the Fulbright mission. And when we tell our story, we make the case for the changes that we've done in other countries how we've changed lives, and that's very important in doing advocacy. So I really am thankful for this award, 
and thanks to these wonderful um, colleagues of ours, uh, Christine and also John Bader, for noticing us. Thank you for this recognition. It means a lot to us. Don't forget your award. Yes. All right, everyone. We are now on to our last award of the night. And this award is the Excellence in Service Award. As Fulbrighters, we all know the importance of public service and increasing understanding between groups of people. The chapter receiving this award spent the last year creating programming that benefited those impacted by natural disasters in their communities. From ice cream trucks and fundraising to Thanksgiving food drives, this chapter and its leaders are well deserving of recognition for their service to others in the name of Fulbright. This award goes to the Louisiana chapter. <laughs> Patrice Bolton, the president of the Louisiana chapter. Thank you all so much. Um, it's really an honor for our chapter. We're relatively a new chapter and we hit the ground running. Thank you to the board and to the Fulbright Association. Um, we just couldn't get off the ground without you guys. We call a million times and they're always there um, to provide information, answer questions, tell us what we can and sometimes what we can't do, which is good to know, and um, keeps us out of trouble. Um, Louisiana has a reputation, so. <laughs> um, I would like to ask you all to stop and think for just a moment and remember the day that you received your letter saying that you were Fulbright. And I want you to think about the pride. And for me, the amazement that that was actually happening. Um, sorry, it's a big deal, right? So I don't know about you, but there's no way to guess how your life would change um, because of that. And the people's lives you have the ability to touch and when you serve other people, how powerful that is. So when I went to Nepal, I came home looking for a way to continue that feeling, um, wanting it to last. And the chapter is what provides that, and serving is what provides that, is taking care of people in our own backyard. And that's what chapters allow us to do, because we can't always be overseas, somewhere either glamorous or unglamorous. Um, taking care of people, and we also have so much need right where we are, and chapters are a wonderful opportunity to come together and take care of everything around us in our community and build community where we live. And we appreciate the opportunity and all the support. Thank you so much. Now, before we go, um, I just would love for all chapter leaders to please stand. Thank you so much for all of your hard work, all of the programming you do. You really do make this community a community. Thank you so much. Sometimes in life we're, um, we're privileged with a moment, a moment to kind of take stock and a moment to breathe in and, and realize how blessed we are uh, as a community, as a group of friends, as colleagues, as change agents, as 
disciples of a great idea. And uh, I think this evening was just that. I want to thank uh, all, all those folks who were recognized tonight because for me, as I sat here not eating my cupcakes, <laughs> I just thought, this is, this is why we do this, right? This is, this is why we're here. This is why we support you. This is why my extraordinary team, why our great board, why our donors, our members, our sponsors, this is why we do this, right? to make sure that that mission is in the world and stays as vibrant and as powerful and as effective as Patrice just uh, suggested. And that is what I hope you will do moving forward, uh, that you take that feeling into the world and you feel charged by this evening and the uh, examples that you've just seen in front of you. I, I could not be more proud to be part of this community, I, I truly. Truly could not. Um, a couple of things before we let you go to your evening. Um, there, some of them are kind of pedestrian, so uh, I, I feel the transition is rather rough. <laughs> so, tomorrow you will receive an email. At, Yeah, yeah, I'll push through. <laughs> Munir had to leave and get on a flight, so I can't blame him for this, so uh, it's, it's, it's too late for that. You'll get a, uh, an evaluation for the conference. We'd love to hear your feedback to learn from our, uh, from our mistakes, from our great choices. Uh, tell us what went right and what went wrong, and we'll, we'll try to fix it. Um, uh, and so we, we look forward to that. Not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is the chapter leader workshop, and uh, those of us who will be part of that, we look forward to seeing you in the morning. So uh, don't forget, uh, uh, sadly, no yoga tomorrow, but uh, at least we'll start with breakfast. So that's good. Uh, on the uh, table over there are more copies of this film. We do not want to take this home with us. And therefore, you will be taking this home with you. Uh, so please grab a copy on your way out, um, or I'll be mailing it to you uh, <laughs> cash on delivery. Um, anyway, I, I, I do, again, want to thank you very, very much for uh, your coming here, for your support. Um, I, I do look forward to seeing every single one of you again next year in Denver. Again, October, yes, at October 20, October, sorry, October 19 to 22, and I'd like to ask you a favor. So if each one of you could invite two other Fulbrighters to join you next time. Now that doesn't count the people who are at your table right now, that's, <laughs> that's cheating. And, Bring some more friends, join the party. This is such an amazing, wonderful experience. It's so life-affirming. Don't you want to share it with a couple other folks? Yeah. And, and finally, we'll look to see you this spring. Uh, just as a final reminder, uh, on April 19th, we will be celebrating the Fulbright Prize here in Washington, followed by our Advocacy Day, and it will be uh, another great uh, moment to be together as a community. Again, thank you very much for coming. Enjoy your day and be safe as you return home. Take care and be in touch. Thank you. <laughs>